Hi guys, I'm here today to talk to you about the COVID-19 epidemic, pandemic and how it has gone here in Iceland and what we have done and I'm going to also reiterate a little bit of the history of it. All of this started on the 31st of December 2019 when the Wuhan Mun Municipal Health Commission reported lots of cases of pneumonia. They later found that the virus was a coronavirus and it got the name Corona-19 or COVID-19. On the 13th of January 2020, the first case is reported outside of China, in Thailand. No one has really taken any notice of it and no one is really worried about what's going on. On the 23rd of January, the Director of Health here in Iceland expresses concerns about the spread of the disease and starts monitoring, waiting to see what will happen. On the 28th of February, first Icelandic person is diagnosed with COVID-19. He had been in northern Italy, most likely on a skiing trip, I believe, and he was outside what would consider to be infectious zones. On the 6th of March, we activated here in Iceland emergency measures. Talks about going further have started, but we have not taken any serious action at this point. On the 7th of March, Instructions for individuals with underlying issues are published. Hand washing and social distancing are recommended. On the 9th of March, danger is widely recognized by now and all over the Alps and ski resorts in Switzerland, Germany, Austria, France and Slovenia are now considered to be possible sources of infection. On the 12th of March, the Director of Health is not condemning nurses and doctors who went on a skiing trip to Europe. They went into zones that were considered to be outside of the original parameter of infectious areas, but they are actually put into quarantine upon coming back. Many consider this to be lack of discipline by these people, and I think that by getting themselves into quarantine, they were robbing the healthcare system of valuable resources. That this was potentially very dangerous. On the 13th of March, we start seeing serious measures. Gatherings of 100 people or more are prohibited starting on the midnight of the 16th of March. Smaller gatherings need to ensure that at least two meters are between individuals. Infected individuals in Iceland now number for 142. On the 18th of March, anyone entering the country is ordered to go immediately into a two-week quarantine regardless of where they are coming from. Excluded from this are crews of freighters and airplanes. On the 20th of March, schools, preschools and athletic organizations have carefully organized their schedules for the days and weeks to come in order to comply with the Minister of Health and Social Security's instructions restricting school activities and gatherings. On COVID.is, instructions are now in Icelandic, English and Polish. On the 19th of March, 391 people are now infected. 22nd of March, the Icelandic government announces a ban on gatherings of 20 people or more, starting on the Tuesday of 24th of March. These measures are put in place to halt the spread of COVID-19 infections in Iceland, following recommendations from the chief epidemiologist to Svanti Svavastotir, Iceland's Minister of Health. 1st of April, infection is detected in the West Church. Infections are now 1,045. 2nd of April, Tracer app is now available through the App Store and Google Play. It is called Rachning C19. On the 22nd of April, in light of decreasing number of infected individuals, restrictions will be eased on the 4th of May. Gatherings of up to 50 people will be allowed. The active infections have gone down to 263 and on covid.is you can see that new infections have gone down very quickly. On the 24th of April, the government announces that border controls will be tightened and anyone entering the country will have to enter a two-week quarantine. Those rules will be acted upon from the 24th of April and be reconsidered on the 15th of May. The initial thoughts of the Health Directorate and the three-person committee put up to ma both manage the situation and communicate to the public would create herd immunity whilst controlling the load created by those that caught the disease so as to minimize casualties. The actions taken, although perceived to be too weak by many and too strict by some, did better than that. The virus seems to not only have been contained but reduced to a state where we are currently seeing 
asymptomatic or mild cases. Hence the quarantine measures for people traveling to the country to reduce the chance of another outbreak. Essentially what happened is that they were expecting a lot more to happen. They were expecting more serious cases and we were worrying about the load on the healthcare system. Herd immunity would have made sure that another outbreak would not happen here in Iceland. It would have ensured that those who are vulnerable would have less chance of catching it because the people in the front line would have been the immune ones. The Icelandic response team, which has been communicating and doing it very well, consists of three persons. Thorolver, a doctor, the chief epidemiologist of Iceland, the director of health of Iceland, Alma Möller, and Víðir Reynisson. He is a chief superintendent of the Icelandic police. These three have been communicating in a very well versed manner and very polite and calm way to Icelanders how to do this. Instead of just containing it and creating the herd immunity with the casualties that would be expected, which would have been a lot higher, we have only had 10 deaths. We have gone into a state where we're only seeing asymptomatic or mild cases, meaning that we're removing the outbreak denying the outbreak, we seem to be going back into a normal state. We know that we haven't eradicated the virus and that's going to be very hard to do, especially with people coming from abroad. But the herd immunity idea is a dangerous one because it can lead to a lot more infections and deaths. It gets into vulnerable parts of the nation, so we had to do a close down. Social distancing is a good measure. The hand washing seems to have done its part and we have seen a lot fewer cases than we expected. I have here a few reasons which I think are also playing a part in why Iceland is faring so well. First of all, we are an island far away from others, so having no border countries with roads has helped a lot. 90% of all passengers coming to Iceland, all people coming to Iceland, is going through the one airport, so we have been able to, we would be able to control it keep a lot tighter rein on it than many other countries. We have a bad public transportation system. 85% of transportation, and this is an estimate by me, in the country is by cars or bikes. Reykjavik truly is a car city and the culture show this clearly, so this works in our favor. Although a healthy public transportation would be better in the long run, we really are a car nation and usually when you see people going to work or school, they are driving alone in their cars. The most important part to me, I don't know if Icelanders will agree with me, is that we're not as culturally strong in close-knitted relationships and uh, family cohesion as, for example, the Italians. Parents rarely live with their children and upon retirement tend to go to care homes rather than go live with their children. They tend to mingle more with people their age and therefore the social division, isolation, is more pronounced here in Iceland. The gaps between generations are bigger here than in other countries with more close-knitted societies. Where Italy has 45 years of median age, Iceland only has 36.5. The last but not the least point I want to make is that positive and level-headed approach to the situation by majority of people helped a lot. We did not doubt the health directorate too much and we followed the instructions or at least the necessary majority of people did. The things that they initially worked against Iceland is also a few, but again, they are more my opinion than anything else. So you can take them with a grain of salt. I think that Iceland has lacked discipline and cohesion as a society. We were not quick to start adhering to the administrative instructions given by the health directorate. And what I can only describe as entitlement and self-absorption frustrated a lot of people in the early days, although people got their act together as seriousness of the situation became clearer. I have examples that make me angry, but I think I shouldn't be talking about them because they're only going to frustrate people and I just have to assume that they were in many cases misunderstandings or just lack of knowledge but I can't really believe people are that stupid or evil that they would do this. Then a little bit of politics into this. Um, I think we have a bad governing body. The government felt aloof and strangely distant from all of this. We have no strong leaders. Matters running through the parliament were being pushed in the shadows and did not necessarily concern the welfare of the people. Raise of salary for the members of parliament and internal strife and bickering within the parliament in the news show clearly the lack of leadership Icelanders face in their politicians. They stepped aside so that the three-man committee could do their work. And that was good. 
but it feels to me less of a noble act of saying I don't know what to do so I'm gonna leave it up to the experts and it feels more like we need some, some scapegoats. If they do this, they'll get their 15 minutes of fame and then the nation will forget about them, which I hope won't happen, but we'll just step back in. And they were running matters through the parliament that were actually irrelevant to the situation at hand and only served to anger people. To give you a little bit of background, nurses and doctors, nurses mostly, have been fighting a fight with the state about pay raises and their salaries and their conditions and nothing has been happening and now they are put at the front of this they are putting their lives in danger literally and the response that we got from the parliament was that a big race for the members of parliament and politicians and the upper echelons of the governing body came through this is not only stupid this is really awkward and this should diminish the faith that people have in politicians but it's not doing that that I can tell because I think people are just scared. Even though Iceland has seemingly made it through relatively unscathed in regards to the virus, the recession that will follow and has already begun will be a problem for us. The tourism industry has collapsed more or less and the numbers I got two weeks ago indicate that 55,000 out of the 200,000 strong workforce have been reduced to unemployment or reduced work in one form or another, me included. How we will come out of this, no one knows, but this need for serious action from the government and this will be the biggest challenge Iceland has faced since it became a sovereign body. The 2008 crisis got solved by themselves because the Icelandic krona went down the dump and suddenly it became a country that was worthwhile visiting. And once it grew in popularity and the krona becoming strong again did not play against us. And we have had increasing numbers of tourists per year and we have numbered over 2 million tourists a year. Now all of this has gone away. I don't know. For better or for worse we had moved a lot of the workforce and a lot of the foreign workforce in Iceland was working in tourism. And tourism is next to nothing at this time. This is a government thing. This is not the you or me think this is the government they need to take decisive action and do the right thing i think that the state should increase its expenditure and put the money into the workforce keep the consumption up so that companies will not go under we need to increase traveling within iceland which is going to be hard because it's very expensive to travel with iceland and many icelanders just can't afford to do that i think a good summer uh, great weather would help and increase the chances of this I don't have all the answers. I do have a lot of questions for them, which I don't think we're going to get answers to. And I don't think that those in charge are going to act favorably to those who are in need or not favorably enough. I hope I'm wrong, but my feeling is that we have people who are entitled, who are getting their money, their salary from the state, and they're fine. They just got a raise, so everything is going to be okay. So when this is over and travel starts again, they can do what they want and they don't really worry or concern themselves about us. That is my main concern and I think that goes for many countries. I'm going to stop now. I hope you liked the video. If you want to have me talk more about the situation here in Iceland, whether it's about COVID-19, politics or whatever, please let me know. Leave behind any questions you have in the comment sections. Press the like button if you liked the video. If you did not like it, press the unlike button and subscribe. Thank you for watching.